when I just got sober when I was 30 years old. They were right, but I'm not that guy. What made you decide to uh, treat employee like that? When it comes to creating culture, yeah, they don't know how much money I spent, nor do they care. Do you um, like uh, meditate? They're about 15 Gs. He was dentist, and he was bald headed, and he was like ripped. Go back to them and tell them the result from implementing the advice that they gave you, and they'll give you more advice. He kicked me and I went down. We only get one opportunity to live here. And, and having two parents that I've buried, yeah. I can tell anyone that's in your situation, like whatever that is that's keeping you from reaching out, get over it. What's going on, everyone? Uh, welcome to Be Frank Podcast. Today, we have a special guest. John Blaine, he is the owner of the commercial door and he's been in the construction business for a while now. And I can't wait to uh, wait to get to know more about John today. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. How are you? Good, good, doing good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. So you have been our client and also like you have a great business. So those people who are listening to this podcast, can you kind of introduce who you are, what you do? Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, basically, as far as business goes, I own a commercial and industrial door company or mm -hmm. a construction company, and we specialize in doors of all types. Uh, I won't bore you with all the types. <laughs> it's basically every kind of door that happens to be situated on a commercial or industrial building. Yeah, so, I mean, it's uh, my employees uh, asked me, Tim went to a photo shoot at the, your store, uh, your uh, location office. What is that? Like you have like uh, some ball, right? Like a big ball, like one, you know what I'm talking about? What's that called? Like a holistic, like a energy, oh, some machine. Oh, the biocharger? Yes, yeah. yes. Would you kind of tell me about that? Yeah. What is biocharger? Biocharger, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's like a new technology. They basically take a Tesla coil and then different gases that are found, I believe on the surface of the sun, and they're contained in different vials and they rotate and, and light up. They send electricity through the gases and then the, and the Tesla coil. And what I, I, so basically long story short, I don't know all the science behind it and how to explain it properly, but that's kind of, you can get a visual. Um, and then basically what it does is it replicates all of the natural healing energies from the sun Huh. And so it's something that you bring indoors if you're not getting a lot of, of sunlight and, and you can charge your body. So is that like a provide so much like a like a white light, like a vitamin D kind of situation? Yeah, it's like kind of a thing like a vitamin D situation. <laughs> yeah, as well as whatever other, you know, natural uh, I, I, uh, benefits that you get from the sunlight it, it reproduces that indoors is the the theory is and that's my best understanding of it uh -huh. how how big is it uh it's pretty pretty big it's about well the thing itself is only about three feet tall and maybe two feet wide, wide. it's like a big square that's pretty table. big ball yeah I'm sure. it's on a little table nice how much that cost <laughs> <laughs> uh it's they're about 15 g's 15 G's. Yeah. So, like, wh how? What made you wanted to purchase that? So, I've been going. I go to a lot of events. They're like self improvement events, or like they're like health health related stuff and, mm -hmm. and motivational stuff or whatever. And um, you went to Tony Robbins. Is that is that kind of? Yeah, I did. I did Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership for a year, and so actually at UPW. And another event that they do that's for like platinum members only, uh, they set up those biochargers in yeah. like a room. And so you're depleting all your energy through the events because they do a lot of like, Tony Robbins is very much into state, put your state first, like your energy is everything. Yeah. And your physical state controls the the thoughts you're going to think and, and just the things you're going to focus on. And so he's real big on like, state management and so in those events uh so the, the, the depleted the, the bio what's that called biocharger biocharger was at the event yeah so is that uh, he has been a couple of events and that's where i seen it and uh and it sat around them and talking with friends and whatever and it was concluded amongst a lot of people that that 
is actually a, a really beneficial thing. And so I got it for my team really. Nice. And they sit around. And but you felt them. it? Yeah, because I mean, we do that, but we do like that. That's just the one that if you come visit the office, you can see physically. Yeah. But we do a lot of things every day. Yeah. We do, you know, some people have like whatever, five, five minute yoga or dance party or whatever to keep the energy in the office. Up. Right. And um, that's one of the things we do. But we do like a bunch of other ones as well. I mean, like that's something I always had a respect. And then whenever I came to your office for the first time, you focus on employee and then you focus on employees like happiness and the culture and that kind of stuff. How did you come about about like, did you always thought about that or like uh, was that something like uh, you read from the networking event or whatever to create? Because I know you take uh, employees out and then get get them sneakers and all that kind of stuff. You guys do a lot of cool stuff. Like, yeah. What, 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 what made you decide to uh, treat employee like that? Honestly, just long story short, it's just being working for a lot of company. I've, like I said, I've been in construction since I was 16. Mm -hmm. I've always been a hard worker. I've always been an intelligent guy, especially working with my hands. And I've always been, you know, good natured in employment and worked well with others and all the things. And I just had a lot of jobs for companies that didn't value their employees uh, and in particular didn't value the employees that were doing the difficult labor and you know what i mean the, the guys that are in the field doing the work and so yeah that's what basically when i started this company it was like this is going to be an employees first company yeah and, and customers first because another thing too was a lot of the company not a lot but there were companies and there are companies out there and the, especially in the service side of construction not necessarily the big projects and stuff like that, but the service industry side where I felt that some of their sales practices, upselling when not needed and things like that, they, they would ask their employees to do what I consider to be unscrupulous sales practices and take advantage of customers and things like that. And so like those that are the thing, two things. That thing's like a people don't need yeah. like to sell that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, selling them things they don't need and charging, overcharging and things like that. And I've I've heard and seen people overcharge customers because they lived in a nicer neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff to me was like, I'm not willing to participate in that. And and I've, and I'm gonna have a company. We're gonna take care of our employees. And so that kind of birthed this. And it is pretty <laughs> pretty expansive. Some of the stuff we do, right? Um, and it's been it's been a journey for sure. Because I mean, it's a, it's a the company is also an enterprise and we need to make profits to stay in business. Oh, and yeah, so a sure. lot of the things that we've done have been very expensive. Yeah. And so learning to manage that, uh, and, and do it financially intelligent, intelligently, financially, while still having the impact on the employees has been an incredible journey for me. Do you budget like, uh, for me, like a, I have a business and then like, you know, we do Christmas party or something like that. And then we do like a morning meeting sometime. I mean, I should do that every morning. But I don't think that uh, we do as much as you guys do. But like for, uh, you know, like employees, like a retreat or th those kind of stuff, like takes time and all that kind of stuff, right? Yes. But do you budget that in or like what? what is your, like yeah, do you I have a strategy? That. Are you doing now? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That, that's that's what I mean by the journey. It's yeah. Like it, it, originally, I was just throwing things at the wall. Yeah. Trying to keep you know make it work. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and what's the craziest thing like you throw to the employees? Um, like the craziest thing that we did that I didn't budget for, that aside of that bio machine. <laughs> yeah, aside of that. Yeah. Um, uh man we did we went and uh did uh, the little race cars down there in norman oh cool and uh and went to lunch and did and did an event with like a business coach and stuff like that all in one day oh nice. and then it ended up being really expensive yeah uh, i was not aware that those cars were like several hundred dollars each person or whatever yeah so <laughs> it ended up costing almost as much as the bike <laughs> <laughs> for like something that we do that, that we do those like quarterly yeah and so um 
you know, I've learned to manage those more intelligently and still get the same impact. Got you. On the team. Do you do you think that makes a whole bunch of difference? Because a lot of people, and then I I hate to be that way, and they also like sometimes you know, like um you you uh, built your company, and then now like it's kind of like a small business vibe, and then like a family friendly, and then whenever you try to grow, like it comes down to like numbers, budgeting, analytics, and all that kind of stuff, right? So then. Like, um, you know, you get like uh, financial people ask you, say, hey, why do you spend this money? What is your ROI? You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you ever, th- does people ask you that or? Yeah. I, 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 so I have a CFO. Yeah. What, yeah. what, did, what did he say to you? <laughs> uh, ultimately, he works for me. Yeah. So, and he knows how, and he's also part of, the same community of yeah caring about the culture nice right? and caring about creating world-class you know raving fan we, what we call raving fan culture which means like the people that work our internal clients and our external clients would be the people that work for you yeah and the people you work for are raving fans like they'd be crazy to go anywhere else or use anyone else yeah and so he's very in tune with that yeah so he hasn't been aggressive in addressing it directly yeah but we're he has looked at the numbers and helped me to see that like we can still get the same impact yeah maybe be more budget friendly got you that makes yeah. sense yeah. like a, what what percentage do you think you spend on employees uh so well i actually just did these numbers um we did like we spent 40k mm-hmm. last year on on employee related that's great stuff like that yeah um, but you know and we can still have that same impact and, and we're looking to do 20 this year and have that impact with even more with a little more preparation uh with the content and stuff that we're going to bring right trainings and then you know be more budget friendly on the event part of it yeah uh we can we can definitely bring it down i mean it's kind of like the same thing about like you know giving like your significant other or whatever to gift. And then girls always say like, uh, it doesn't matter the cost of a present, right? It's the thoughts it counts. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if that's always true. In that scenario, but it's yeah. certainly true in some scenarios. And I would say yeah, when, when it comes to creating culture, yeah, they don't know how much money I spent, nor do they care. Yeah. They just care about how awesome it was to do the training, to do the event, and to go out to lunch together and talk, talk openly about things. Yeah, that that is awesome. And then I do think that uh, sometimes we do, uh, like we do morning meetings, and then like we go uh, around the table, say uh, we kind of read a book called Life Is a Joke. Okay. And then uh, it's like a literally like a two page, like every chapter, and then it has a joke, and then it has like a life lesson and the points so there's a hundred jokes jokes in that book and then we go around the table said uh yeah this is okay uh, this is a book and then uh we put the dollar bill so where, where we stop but uh and then we talk about that and after that we say three grateful things about today right. or like yesterday yeah. and then we say what what's the one thing you want to get done today because well, a lot yeah. of uh Yep. Uh, many of days, like we're marketing and advertising agency, so we're like very hectic. We have to high speed. Yes. Whenever people are going home, yes, they goes like, "Oh, I didn't do nothing," you know. Yep. So yeah. if they say, "Oh, I'm gonna do this one one thing at the uh, one thing I'm gonna do this today," and then they finish it out, what they say they would say they will get done, yep. and then that kind of builds character. So that's so, kind of little things we do. It takes like. 15 to 30 minutes every morning and if i calculate that to like every day how much i spend that time but yeah, yeah. and then i mean and, and the thing is is it's like and what i didn't remember when i talked about i needed to get more budget friendly another thing see what i didn't calculate in that 40 grand is how much money we didn't make because everyone wasn't working right and that's where this year that that's coming to play but i think it's amazing that you guys are doing that and especially 
uh, well, the whole thing, actually. I mean, keeping it light, keeping it fun, getting everyone engaged. And then also uh, the end part is so important of having a focus. Like, what do you want to get accomplished today? And yeah. everyone focusing in on that is so critical because I'm with you. Like, we come in the office and this person needs that and that person needs this and this phone rings and that email comes in and yeah. everyone just gets caught up playing pop a mole yeah and doesn't get their outcome and and that that speaks to me big time because i'm actually in i'm actually about to start a six-week program called lifebook mm. and lifebook is about taking all the areas of your life what do i want to accomplish in my fitness and health mm. what do i want to accomplish in my finances my personal relationships my business all these different areas there's 12 different categories that are all meaningful areas of each person's life that they've summarized in 12 categories and you really get deep and ask yourself what you want to accomplish there huh and so uh that's something i'm about to get into i'm like kind of into that right now like being yeah. really intentional about what i want yeah and 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 that's where like that's where fulfillment in, in our career is is like when we focus in that morning time and, and say i'm getting this outcome today yeah no matter what you still manage all those things, yeah. But, but you come back to your your north star, and you get your result, and you get what you want. And you feel fulfilled in doing so, all right? So I think that's huge that you guys. Well, thank you. I mean, like that's yeah. awesome. You guys do that too. I mean, like that. Do do you um, like um, meditate? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. do you meditate in the morning or what, what? What do you do? So I I do it randomly. Yeah. Uh, I do have a two hour morning routine that that includes anywhere and it depends. On you have a two hour morning routine. I have a two hour morning routine. Oh, yeah. tell walk me yeah. through your two hour morning morning okay. routine. Okay. And it fluctuates. Okay. But I mean, I get up at five thirty every day, no matter what. Even on the yeah. weekends, I don't I don't not get up at five thirty. Wow. If on the weekends, what I, time you go to sleep? Nine thirty. Damn. Yeah. Okay. And it's sometimes ten thirty. Gotcha. Right? So, but like last night it was ten thirty. Okay. But I mean nine thirty is my is my true north. Like I, I that's my go to. Yeah. Right? Like so th this quarter, um, if if I miss twelve times throughout the quarter, like it doesn't really affect me. I right. Really so, but, um, but yes, yeah, so like my morning routine, I get up. I first thing I do is pray. I just thank God put put my hand on my chest breathe in and just say thank you for this breath and then breathe out and then sit up and say show me what you want me to do today and i just start moving and i get up and i either drink celery juice lemon water or just straight up water mm. to hydrate yeah first thing and then do stretch like a deep squat stretch and then up dog down dog one minute each and then uh and then what else do I do? And then uh, I'll hit the gym. Huh. And, or no, I'm sorry. I make my oatmeal first. And, that's, and so I have like all these different oatmeals that I make. <laughs> Apple, banana, cinnamon. Yeah. Cocoa, choco. Right. Pumpkin. Uh, pumpkin. Gluten, gluten free. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And it's, it's oats and they're pretty, you know, they're significantly low on gluten. Okay, good. And, uh, and so and, and so I'll have my oatmeal then work out then come back and eat six eggs three egg whites or three yolks removed so like scrambled eggs farm fresh nice eggs so i eat six eggs so i have the carbs and then work out and then the protein and uh and so i have my eggs and then hit the shower and then you lift like when you go to gym you lift i i, I it depends like I'm, I'm not like a big bodybuilder obviously like i've, all, I've always but I'm, I'm pretty athletic and uh, right now I'm doing full body, a uh, full body program. I'm, I'm full body all the way. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And, but like, like the last quarter of last year, I was yeah. doing a PPL. Okay. I call it PPLA cause I always throw abs. Nice. In, like in the evening I hit abs, you know what I mean? And so, um, but yeah, so right now I'm on doing a full body split. Yeah. It's, it's just every other day mm -hmm. it's a full body workout in the morning. So that's the two hours. So and then I work out and then I have my eggs and shower and then once I'm done with the shower, I usually have about thirty minutes oh. that um, until like till work starts. And so I either read something or watch a YouTube video 
or meditate or I kind of take my flexibility hour just depending on what how that day is going on how I'm feeling yeah kind of checking with myself usually it includes like drinking tea and listening just listening to everything around going on you know what I mean for a couple minutes and then by doing that it leads me into what I really want to do honor myself with that morning for that last 30 minutes before work and it just depends huh. it's just kind of a, I like to stay flexible like I'm very scheduled yeah but I also have to have some flexibility yeah because chaos happens right. in the business yeah, yeah that makes sense what uh did you always have that routine no how how long you been doing it uh a little over a year what what made yeah. you change to have that routine just leveling up man. yeah just because like starting the business right i mean i started the business six years ago and well actually let me back up and give you some more background if how much time do we have oh like whatever okay yeah because i could take you all the way back and then i'll lead into that okay which, because uh, I know you, you asked a little bit about kind of my story and yeah. what led up to me starting the business. And yeah, for sure. And things like that. And, um, I mean, I do believe uh, every entrepreneur and a business owner has a story when they started or before that or what, what they grew up with. I mean, I do have a story and I, I like to learn about anything. So, yeah, yeah please. Yeah, because the question of like what, like, this is such a good question, like what, what, in, what encouraged you or what? what got you to want to be have such a structured morning schedule and stuff like that such a, a meaningful and deep question and it does go all the way back for me right? yeah like when i was a kid uh we grew up poor right i was in foster homes at you know for a couple of years and actually my mom got us out of foster home and as soon as she did i was 12 years old and started running with the wrong crowds and so as she got her stuff together, I kind of started to fall apart. And I was going, to, I was arrested the first time when I was 12 years old, going out of juvenile hall, drugs, alcohol, parties, whatever. And that unfortunately lasted until I was 29 years old. And there's a lot of chaos and ch difficulties and just, you know, bad stuff that went into that. Um, and I had, my son was born when I was 23, so I was still getting loaded for six years, his first six years going in and out of jail, things like that. And um, and when I was 29 years old, I, 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 I never believed, like I didn't, it's not that I didn't believe in God or anything spiritual like that, I just never thought of it, right? It wasn't part of my lifestyle. Yeah. And I actually was in Torrance, California, where we live in, and I hit my knees outside of this apartment. I just felt I, I was, it was rough. I, mean, I was up for like three days. I wasn't sleeping. Things were happening around me. I had a bunch of just bad people in my life and bad things going on. And, uh, and my, and my son was not in my life and it was just killing me. Like the whole, this, it just all led up my behaviors and just, I didn't understand. And so I hit my knees and I remember looking at my hands outside this apartment in Torrance. And I said, God, I don't know what's wrong with me. Please help me. It's the first prayer I ever said. I meant it like I, it's like the most, like I meant it more than I meant anything in my entire life. I didn't know why I kept doing the things I was doing. It wasn't being there for my son and all this stuff. And so anyway, so fast forward. So basically, and I believe that that prayer is, is the result of why I'm here today and all those things. And so fast forward, I ended up getting sober in a Salvation Army. I spent six months in there, got sober. And that was so 11 years ago, I got sober in July. Now I'll be 12 years sober this coming July, you know, God willing. And, um, and so that started my journey of like wanting to do better because coming from where I came from, like I just, I always, I never blamed anyone for our circumstances when we were kids. Like yeah. I never, I never really went that road with it. I always kind of took it in stride and, and thought, you know what, this is just makes me stronger. Yeah. And, uh, and once I removed the, the drugs and alcohol and the chaos and all, and I mean, I like, I like, I mean, I'm talking like 
I was doing everything and then I was doing nothing. I didn't hang out with one person that I used to hang out with. Not one person from my previous life. You used to cut out the people? Everyone. And everything, and I mean, I just literally, and you know, no drugs, no alcohol, nothing, no weed, nothing. And did you just went to mission action kind of stuff? Like you just moved or what? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, because I was in, I was living in Huntington Beach at the time. Got gotcha. you. And, uh, and then you moved I got, here. When I got sober, so I, I was in Torrance when I said that prayer, and it still took some time after that, but a series of events and arrests and whatever. Yeah. And then I was in I was in Huntington Beach at, at this other time, and uh, and uh, yeah. So actually, I forgot. Then did you move? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I was living in Huntington Beach, and I, and I went to uh, I just I just went to the Salvation Army in Anaheim, and then from there I stayed in Anaheim, but I never went. Like I didn't go to Huntington Beach, and no one knew where I was and, and that stuff. And um, and I ended up. My mom got sick. I moved to Santa Barbara. Spent some time. You know, got a job. Spent some time with her. Uh, got to be with her every day for the last like six months of her life. She passed away. And uh, my dad, who lived here in Oklahoma my whole life, he was sick all of a sudden with cancer. Uh, and he's like, and I didn't really know him that well because again, I mean, I was he didn't raise me. I just never really knew him. And he wanted to get to know me and honestly I kind of wanted to get to know him and so I moved out here and he ended up staying coming and staying with me mm. the last few months of his life and I got to know him more than I ever did my entire life before and he passed away and then I was stuck in Oklahoma huh. and like and I was single and I was like what I thinking about what I'm going to do and I noticed that in Oklahoma there's no door companies like ours here yeah, like they do all the types of doors, right? right? And so I started that company six years ago. Kind of saw the niche and was like, I'm gonna go for it. I've always kind of been prone to. People have always said, like, I remember like on construction sites and stuff, they'd be like, "Leave that kid, don't pick on him. Like, you're gonna work for him someday." And like multiple, I would like hear that. You know what I mean? Those right. kind of comments. And so, and I felt in like I really felt because you know when you have that, those kind of things like a dream or something you kind of feel it come out of you like ah, oh, like and so i've been it and then it kind of came to fruition and whatever i started that company and uh and yeah so here we are today yeah you know, my life's really good but starting 11 years ago every day of my life i try to be a better man than i was the day before and some of it has to do with like repentance for all the the damage that i did before you know what i mean yeah and, some of it has to do with having my self worth restored from having the drugs and alcohol removed, and getting back in you know touch with with who I am and yeah. and all that stuff and learning to forgive myself and learning to forgive. So it's just been a journey. You know, it started as mostly a spiritual journey. Yeah, and then it's turned into a, a health journey and a wealth journey, and it just continued to level up in different areas. Now I'm doing this life book to really optimize even more every area of my life yeah it's just it's amazing i feel super blessed that's awesome i mean now you have a successful business and then uh i mean successful mindset and health and like i'm just i'm very respectful for that what you're doing and then i'm i mean i i'm curious because i have a kind of same problem i guess um i mean what made you decide to like so did did your dad reach out to you yeah. say hey like i called you or something yeah, yeah, exactly and then like so for me like i haven't talked to my dad for a while okay. and then i know for the fact that i just like it's hard for me to reach back out mm -hmm. like even he reached out to me just like for me it's just kind of hard for me to yeah start the relationship like how what made you decide to because it's kind of hard right because he didn't raise you or whatever yeah and then that stuff, and then like, what made you decide it? Uh, it's it's I, we got to get over our shit. Like, we only get one opportunity to live here, and, and having two parents that are buried. Yeah, I can tell anyone that's in your situation, like whatever that is that's keeping you from reaching out, get over it. Figure out a way to get past it. You know what I mean? Or not get over it. That's kind of, but like, 
work around it or get past it and do the best you can because if you do that and he doesn't reciprocate or whatever you will have done your part and you'll be able to sleep well at night knowing that you didn't let your your drama at this because remember I mean, we had drama when I was, I had a certain level of drama and things that I believed when I was 12. I had a certain set of rules and values and beliefs when I was 20. And I have a certain, in my 30s, I had different rules, values, and beliefs. And I have them today and we're always evolving. And so I don't want to look back when I'm 50 and go, man, I was immature when I was 40. Like I did when I was 30, looking back on my 20s. Knowing, man, I was immature. I was selfish. Yeah. I was all these things. Anyone that's in the situation where a parent's aging, I always encourage them to just, and they're having a challenge with re- reaching out, saying, but I don't know the details, right? But if this speaks to you and and you can honestly look inside yourself and say, yeah, this is my my roadblock for my own emotional challenge or, or, or whatever, or this thing he did, or that, I mean, even if it takes like, working with a counselor or someone to work through that, I would encourage anyone to try to work through their baggage to, and then approach those parents. And, hey, look, like, none of us are perfect. My parents did the best they could yeah. with what they had. And, frankly, we have a lot more resource, resources. We're a lot more in tune with ourselves emotionally, spiritually, and things like that than previous generations were. Yeah. And so, again, I feel like it's incumbent upon us even though the nature of the relationship, the hierarchy of that relationship, most people think, well, he should reach out. Because they're parents. Yeah, because yeah. they're the parents, but they're human beings. Yeah. And they're all, they're, and, and the resources they had to develop themselves, Right. they don't have the resources yeah. like we have today to, to develop ourselves. And that's just my thinking, but I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm yeah. trying to encourage people yeah. to like be the one. Like be the one that be the change you, know, you want to see in the world. Yeah. And our parents didn't really have like that wasn't their philosophy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you do you believe people change? I do. Yeah. I do believe people change because I've changed. Because the same rules. Listen, I was, I was literally a, a Supreme Court judge in the state of California. Looked me in the eyes and said. We don't think you're fit to be a father. You're a habitual criminal. Or they said you're you're you. They said actually we could tell you really love your son, and and you care for him deeply, but based on your record, you're a habitual criminal, and I don't think you're fit. We don't we we find you unfit to be a a father. Yeah, and that was when I was when I just got sober when I was 30 years old, and and that's a whole nother story. But they were right, but I'm not that guy anymore. I don't, I used, when I was a kid, I used to look at people like what I could get from them. And to, from uh, anybody? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, if, when I was 12, 13, 14, 15, and I get in a lot of fights, and yeah, all those different things. And so the same rules, you know, and values and everything that I had then are completely different today. Today, my number one guiding value is how can I be of service? Like, how can I help? Mm -hmm. And so if I'm coming here, if you're inviting me to your podcast, it's like my first thing is like, okay, how can I help? (laughs) And what can I do? And so, and I say a little prayer, you know, and I have a, I have a spiritual life. I'm not like a man of the cloth by any means. Right. I'm almost a walking contradiction because I have a deep and effective I feel effective relationship with my creator, God, the universe, uh, divinity, whatever you want to call it, but I also cuss like a sailor. <laughs> so it's like, you know, but I do my own thing. Like when I said that prayer in Torrance, yeah. he delivered. Yeah. And he gave me an opportunity to get sober and get on my feet. Right. He, she, whatever. Yeah. And and so that's that's my understanding of that, and I, and I pray to that, and I lean into the so, yeah. But I don't know if that helps. No, I mean that that helps. I mean, like I mean, I've been seeing a lot of stuff, and like if you want to love or whatever, you have to give love, the kind of stuff. And like I think your point is like helping people, and then a lot of people help you, 
and stuff. And then I sometimes struggle with that too. It just like is a sense of, um, you know, like a self awareness. I know for the fact that, you know, I grew up in the kind of, kind of similar stuff, but, uh, it's like, I always, I had, I, I did a fight and stuff in school a lot of times. And then, I mean, that's how I got into that, my martial art journey too, a little bit, but my sister was uh, taking a karate class first and then, uh, that karate, uh, so I was like, well, I want to do that too. You know, like I'm stronger. And then I went to the class and then. How old was your sister? Uh, how much older? Uh, she was uh, four years younger. I mean, she is four years younger. And then, uh, so I was like, probably like 15 or 16 or something like that. And then I was kind of, you know, stupid kid, you know, fighting people or whatever, and, you know, breaking like a school window or whatever, (laughs) you know? So, uh, then, uh, so I went to the karate class and the karate teacher told me, say, Hey, you can't come here. You can come to adult class. I was like, all right. So I go to adult class and then, um, so teacher's like, okay. And then do this shadow box, uh, j- jump rope. Yeah. I was like, cool. I'll do that. Right. And then I was doing that for like an hour. Yeah. He's like, okay, go home. Okay. All right. That was boring, you know, I just, but I just kept going. Yep. And then like three, uh, two months later, he's like, okay, you can start punching back. And then I've seen like I've been I've seen in like a lot of different guys, yeah. like punching like meds, doing sparring. Oh really? But like I'm there doing it's jump like, ropes, really, and then doing those wow. like a shadow boxing and then punching backs. Yeah. And then three months later, I got fed up. Say, hey, I would like to uh, spar. Yeah. You know, like I'm here doing nothing. Yeah. I can't fight. Like I beat people. You know, yeah, yeah. outside this. So I went to that little ring. And then Corey teacher, okay. And he kicked me once. Oh yeah. And then I went down. Like it was it was hard kick. It was like even he was not even like trying probably. Right. But his I mean, he was like uh, probably like fifty five years old. He was dentist. Yeah. And he was bald headed and then he was like ripped. Yeah. And then he kicked me and I went down and I was just like almost like kind of crying kind of stuff. Yeah. And then he told me, say, if you're strong, you don't have to show it. Yeah. That's what he told me. And I will never forget that moment. Cause you were, yeah. Wow. Then after that, I stop. I, um, stopped fighting. Honestly. I mean, after that conversation, I really didn't have to fight. And then also like I trained and then he, after that, he let me do other stuff. Yeah. And then that was kind of like a life, uh, moment for me i don't know if what kind of person i became if i didn't have that stuff i did a stuff yeah. stuff after that a little bit but well and that i mean that's that's a lot of i think the character that people see i mean i certainly see it and i think anyone that crosses your path can see that you're a humble dude like <laughs> yeah you can you know, i try to be humble you know yeah, yeah i mean i mean you know you can handle for sure i mean i've seen you in the cage <laughs> so i mean you can you can throw down, but you're not, you don't have to show it, right? You're like, yeah. just a really nice guy. Yeah. I I've, love that. Par- that paradox is amazing. Yeah. It's so true. It's, it's, it's a, uh, it's a true statement. And I think that, uh, it's comes down to the business too. Right. Cause of, I had a kind of same problem with them. Whenever I start uh business, you have, you have to be a boss, right? Like you kind of have to like tell people what to do yeah. and then you have to be like a bigger person or you have to show that your capabilities and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then now, like I've been doing this business things and then I don't really have to show that much. Yeah. I mean, like you just let people take care of it. Yeah. And then like, like you are saying, like help them rather than you show them what to do and then you, like half you don't have to show them like you're the boss yeah like you're automatically boss because i was like i was like 22 whenever we started business Mm -hmm. so like um i had like a lot of people that you too young kind of vibe and a lot of employees at the time was older than me so like i had to kind of be show but i just i think i had learned a hard lesson to be the better manager better boss buying 
saying like if you're strong you're not have you don't have to show it pretty much you know what i mean is that like uh so whenever you're doing like a lot of construction uh for years right and then when you said you were just better than uh, most people that's why you wanted to start a business or what what made you because you could be a contractor to make good money too right but you built the business like what 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 was the starting point of the starting a business yeah i don't i don't necessarily feel that i was better than any anyone else i mean i certainly um and not the not that you're saying it like that but i, I know what you mean but but so i i had an interesting so i i've always had a mentor since since i got sober right like i've always had an older gentleman in my life that i looked up to yeah there were parts, and none of them have been a guru or a, you know, God of any type, but they had, they all had something, or they all have, because I have a couple now. I have a business coach. I have a, a personal mentor, a couple personal mentors, actually, that I check in with regularly. And they all have different things that I want to emulate, and they're all willing to share freely of themselves. Got you. And, uh, and so that's part of why, like, I'm, I pay that forward too. But anyway, long story short, to answer your question is, um, I, I was sitting now with my mentor after my dad had passed he, here at a Starbucks in Oklahoma. Yeah. And figuring out what I was going to do next. It was the middle of the winter, similar to, you know, what we're looking at now. Yeah. And uh, the company I was working for, they they were based out of Dallas. Uh, they, they were changing their sales practices in Oklahoma and I didn't want to participate in that change. And so I wasn't going to work for them anymore. Yeah. And, uh, and again, there were no companies doing what I do, which is all types of doors. And I love doing it. Like it just keeps me challenged and rewarding and all those things. And so I was kind of at a turning point. Do I go back to Southern California? Do I stay in Oklahoma? Do I try something new? What do I do? And, and, and I told him, you know, I've always kind of thought about starting a business, you know, that, so we were looking at options, right? We we're just looking at options. Yeah. And that was one of them. And he said something to me that had a really profound impact on me. And what he said was, and he kind of like grabbed my arm was like, why not you? Why, why can't you start a business and be successful? Yeah. And why can't you have a company where you can treat employees really well and do all the things you want to do? And it was kind of this why not you conversation. And I left that meeting and, and contemplated it for I don't remember how long. But upon contemplation was like, you know what, I'm going for it. I don't have my son in my life right now. I don't have a woman in my life right now. I can I can live in my truck if I had to. Like, I can risk it all. Yeah. I go all in and try this thing. And, and that's what I did. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was more, it was more, yeah, but, and then I also, kind of like I said here, like, I, I also feel like I was destined to kind of be a business owner. Yeah. I don't know why. Like, it's not to, it's not to raise profits and all that. It's not the, what my destiny is. Like, it's saying that matter. I mean, it's kind of meant to be, right? Kind of like a, you have it, it, right? It factor. Yeah. 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 I mean, because again, there were all those moments leading up to that where it was like, I felt internally like an energy. Yeah. Come up where it's like. But like entrepreneurial, I guess you could say, or like I'm meant to be like an entrepreneur. And I've always had lots of great ideas. Like I thought about, I don't know if you are old enough to remember Green Dot, but it was the first prepaid credit card. Mm. And so we had internet that came out. And as soon as you could pay for a bill or anything online, I don't even think at that time you could like purchase things. I think you just could start purchasing things like Amazon or whatever, but mm -hmm. it wasn't Amazon. And at least not that I remember, it was just like American Online or whatever. And it was the internet. And this would have been in, in uh, uh, when I was 25. I don't know what year that was, but uh, I think 2006, like that. 
And uh, and so there's a thing. So and I I was sitting in this like garage with these. There's a all the band stuff set up. Yeah. In a, in a home where these in West LA where these dudes like played music and stuff like that. And I was just sitting in there. And I went on the computer and I was like, man, I need to buy this. But I couldn't. I didn't have a credit card. Like I, no yeah. one would give me a credit card. Yeah. And and I thought, man, like. You can do gift cards. Like, why can't you do a prepaid credit card and give me the 16 numbers and all of that? And then, like, a year later, the first prepaid credit card came out. Gotcha. And so I've always had, like, ideas like that. You know, <laughs> someone probably thought about that way before I did. Yeah. Granted. But the point is someone took the action. To implement it. Yeah. And, um, and so. So why not you? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. So I started the, the door company. Yeah. yeah, it is what it is. We're scaling. Like I said, we're opening another location here yeah. in Oklahoma City. And it's exciting. It's all the things. But more importantly is, like, I, I started a nonprofit, and we're waiting to get 501c3. Nice. And all those things. And to, to and so I'll have the business. And the nonprofit. What's a nonprofit is about? Uh, it's called the Play On Foundation. Mm -hmm. And what we do is provide funding for kids that want to play sports, but they can't necessarily afford the tuition or equipment. Huh. And that's uh, quite simply, that's it. And so each each business of mine, each location, I want to donate $50,000 to the foundation every year. And so that money will roll into funding for kids in Oklahoma. Wherever those locations are, the ones in Oklahoma were pouring to the kids. You going to donate to like a school or like an individual people? So we want to work alongside the schools, public yeah. school system. Yeah. And then any other school system that we can work with. Yeah. To figure out who needs the funding and, and get it to them. Yeah, I think it'd be good to, I mean, like, I know that's your nonprofit organization, but... Um, I have a, I go to a Muay Thai gym and a Jiu Jitsu gym, right? Mm -hmm. So they have a kids class, and then one kid, like I think that was like three or four years ago, one, uh, the girls came to our gym, yeah. and then their parents couldn't afford uh, uh, gym fee because that's hundred dollars a month or whatever, right? That would absolutely be yeah, time. yeah. Because of that, what happened was, so they came to that gym. The reason was they were uh caucasian girls going to black uh african-american uh school okay so they were getting beat up all the time mm -hmm. so they said uh they need to protect themselves mm -hmm. and then so they came to new limits gym and then they got better and then they protect themselves yeah so now they can go to school like safely I mean, like that's like a kind of things i would like to help out like yeah. if you guys yeah. do that full exactly. Do that nonprofit, and then it's such a crazy stuff. Like a, a lot of public don't see it that way. For you know, like a uh, martial arts gym, or you know, the combat yeah. sports stuff to be a kid to be a violent and all that kind of stuff. But some kid really need it. But also some kid who is stronger, or some kid who knows martial art, mm -hmm. is not gonna be bullied. Exactly. And that it's like your story. Like you were in there doing the shadow boxing. He probably could tell you like an ego. <laughs> you like have a big ego or something. Yeah. And then as soon as you get trained, all of a sudden you're like a great guy. <laughs> and like you're more of a protector yeah. than, than a bully. Yeah. Right? So um so you're trained now you like take responsibility. Yeah. Oh, that's that's I think that's ninety nine true, ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Yeah, you get the one guy. That's the martial arts. Bully. Oh yeah, they like. There's yeah. that, guy. but I mean, that's like one percent of the guys. Yeah, gals. Yeah, everyone that I know, not everyone, but I know one guy from my history that was the bully guy that was like black, three different black belts and whatever. Yes, yeah. but everyone else, which is yeah. thousands and thousands of people in martial arts. Yeah, have, have, it's ended up making them a better person. Yeah, that those those guys who has three black belts. Probably went to the gym, like an easy black belt gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. But, I mean, they were just, yeah, probably yeah. that too. Yeah, yeah, just three black belts. It was like, anyway. Yeah. And that, that, was in, that, was, <laughs> that was in the 90s, right? He was like a bully. Yeah. But that that is awesome, though. You have that nonprofit. I mean, like, uh, yeah, I would 
definitely want to help out. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep you posted when we get the 501c3. Yeah. Uh, bro, and that's the thing. Is it's like the playoff foundation. So it's any sports. Yeah. And, and I didn't think of, I haven't thought of martial arts yet. Yeah. But that's absolutely where we want to go. It's, it's really about reaching those kids who are at that time in their life, that critical stage, which is usually around 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 where sports or martial arts are is something that if if their parents and their school system or whatever help get them in there and invest in the equipment and everything to help them be there which they use what they want to do yeah oh uh, it, it can keep them from going a different path and that's like that turning point and the reason is and i'll just i'll share it because uh when so when my mom got us out of foster home yeah oh uh, she was on welfare, my she had us three kids, and she was going to college and doing what she could do. And I and and I didn't go to school. Like we we were that kind of poor. Like we lived in campgrounds, in yeah. tents, in trailers, on the road, in cars, different things before we went to uh the foster care system. And then and so I I don't know if I went to second, third, fourth grade, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but when my mom got us back, I was in fifth grade. And we started going to school regularly. I started getting some hope, and I wanted to play. And of course, I wanted to play hockey, the most expensive sport <laughs> in and LA. I, I didn't know it at the time. Yeah, well, they have uh, street hockey. Like, oh, really? Yeah, like, gotcha. Like, uh, roller bl- roller blades. Oh, nice, nice. Like that. And so, um, and but it was the first thing where, like, my best friend Ryan Williams, he was playing, and so I'd go watch him, watch him, watch him. Yeah, and like, man, I want to play, I want to play, and I got like really encouraged that I might be able to like join in with my friends and play. Yeah, and she's like, we don't have the money, and I couldn't play, and I'm not blaming what happened next on that or her or anything, but I'm just saying, looking back, I lost hope inside that. You know what I mean? I, I felt so defeated by going to the foster care system, being abandoned, yeah, all those things, just the sh- crappy lifestyle we lived before then. And I finally had a, a hope and it got excited. I remember being 12 year old self and thinking, getting excited, like, hey, we have some consistency here and I want to play sports. And I, I just assumed that it would be cool and we, I couldn't do it and it kind of crushed me inside. And like, uh, and, and that, and I literally started running with the wrong crowd. Like, I'm sure, I don't know exactly how far behind that, but it was shortly behind that. Yeah. So that was a fork in the road. And so I want to make sure that we do everything we can to help kids at that critical point to not take the wrong, take a, take a fork that's self-destructive, things like that. I mean, that is awesome. I mean, like I said, I mean, like if I didn't have that karate teacher, you know, I don't know what, what I would have done yeah and then like i think that was important things in my life and i mean that's the one thing i very very much appreciate of my mom is i she just let me do whatever i wanted it to do if i can't if i just follow through it and then she she always talked about kind of my mom was always kind of like you don't have to go to school if you want to work in the hot in the summer and they call in the winter time, you don't really have to go to school, you know? Yeah. But if you want to be comfortable, you probably want to go to school. Yeah, yeah. That kind of Bible, yeah. that was okay. my mom. That's smart. Yeah, yeah so I was like, hmm. Helping you be <laughs> yeah. Yeah. responsible. Yeah, so I did the karate stuff and that place grew, growing up playing baseball. And then it's so funny because I almost want to have all my employees to have a kind of kind of sorts of sports background because people who play sports uh growing up has a little bit different mentality yeah also like um like a camaraderie team and the respect like something i don't think you can't build around it without the playing sports i don't know Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no it makes sense yeah 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 it absolutely makes sense um it's the same uh in in so it'd be like military guys. Yeah. They're going to have a lot, like they like to be like military companies, like the higher military. Like so I worked for a company before I started mine and the guy was, the owner was a special forces gotcha. guy. 
And so lots of the guys that worked for him were military guys. Gotcha. And so it's just the same thinking, the hard work ethic, and, and culture is created almost around the military. Yeah. That. So yeah. I could see with the sports, I mean, you'd have just a, a fun environment, an encouraging environment. Yeah. Uh, when I think of sports, I think teamwork. Yeah. And I think people that know how to how to uh, accept responsibility and take a hit. Yeah, you can talk shit to each other. <laughs> All that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, <laughs> okay, that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah like messing around again. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah that like, little bit of skin, I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, like, I mean, it's great because you said, like, you have, uh, you throughout the, your uh, journey, you always had a mentor, right? How How did you find those mentors? Did you just talk into them or? That is a good question. Uh, just by nature of being in environments. Uh, so when I got sober, I got sober in Alcoholics Anonymous. It's like a program. And there you get a sponsor. Mm. And your sponsor, a lot of what you see or what you might already have preconceived ideas could be true, may yeah. not be true. But my experience was I went in open-minded and willing. And, uh, and I got a sponsor and the sponsor helped guide me through the, they have the 12 steps, right. And the sponsor helped me get through one through 12. And so there was a lot had to do with clearing away the wreckage of the past, making amends for harms done, uh, learning to live on a spiritual basis. Yeah. Daily check-ins with yourself and meditating to a power greater than yourself. You know, it's every day. higher power, they say. Uh, and then helping other people. Yeah. That's kind of the gist of it. And so I had a mentor originally. My first ever mentor was a sponsor. A sponsor, yeah. And so I had him, right? And then, but then as I kept, then as, as I got sober and I, and I wanted to do more than AA, because remember from day one, I was like, I just want to be a better guy than I was. Than yesterday, yeah. And so I've never stayed stagnant. Yeah. And so as soon as I kind of grew out of that, and I still do that. Don't get me wrong. Like that's still a part of my life. I still help people recover from alcohol and drugs. I still lean into that. Um, I have a ton of experience. I've gone to thousands of AA meetings and speak at them every now and then and stuff like that. But my life, that's just very, that's like the peachy nail of my life. And then I have a whole body. Yeah. And it's like, I just kept evolving. And so as I've gone in other environments outside of AA, like I'd get in like business environments. Yeah. Just by making friends in business environments, there were guys I looked up to. And here's the, here's how you get a mentor. Someone that you look up to gives you advice. Yeah. And you actually implement the advice, the advice, and then you go back to them and tell them the result from implementing the advice that they gave you, and they'll give you more advice. And they're more willing to give you more of their time with zero cost and so i would lock i would find people at the tony robbins events yeah or whatever whatever you're into yeah and just guys that maybe maybe him and his wife were like a power couple looking at how they appear to everybody yeah like that's a great looking relationship like i want to learn more about that and how i can have like passionate relationship with the wife like that and stuff like that and so yeah i would go sit at the biochargers or whatever <laughs> or like sit next to them. yeah be like man i really respect yeah this the nature of your relationship you guys just seem to work really well together and really support each other yeah and i that, that speaks to me i would love to learn more about how you do that if you ever have time or and then you switch numbers and so like that's how it always start Huh. And uh, and so right now I have like a couple guys uh, that are my mentors, and then I have a business coach. And I actually have right now I actually have a business coach that I actually started paying for. Huh? Um, because business is kind of different in that business is about money, right? And so to get a really high level business coach that'll be there for me every week for an hour discussion. I found that I can actually pay for that and rely on, and we, we have a whole process and system in place, document everything. Is that like a modern 
that's separate than CFO? Yes. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, my business coach is like my mentor in business, mm. whereas my CFO is like the guy. Finance. The yeah. guy that helps me see things with the numbers that I don't necessarily see. Got you. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's a great advice to get a mentor. I mean, it just makes sense to me because a lot of people ask me question about uh, like a business kind of stuff. Like, how did I start a business? How do you, how did you get the first clients? And how did you start hiring people? But also like uh, people ask me about like fitness, like how did I lose weight and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. And I tell them, you know, but like some people do it, you know? And then like, I was just like, okay, cool. Let's, let me tell you more. And then some people just don't do it. But then I, I just don't want to. You don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And why, why waste your time when you can <laughs> spend that time helping someone that will do it? Yeah, that is very true. Yeah. That is a very great advice. That, that uh, really is an important distinction that, that I don't know. I don't even know where I came up with that or right. But that is so important. Like, if you do what they say, but then you got to go tell them, man, like I, I pulled the chair out for my wife and opened the door and it changed the relationship and here's how it changed it or whatever. And you take it back to them. They're like, dude, good job. <laughs> I want to keep talking because it fills their spirit. Yeah. That they were able to help someone really help someone. Yeah. And so they're getting rewarded and you're getting rewarded. It becomes kind of this really great. Yeah, I think that's important to open the door for your lady. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you should. Yeah, and I mean, that's just like a really like basic example. Of yeah. This, something, but that's with anything. Yeah. With health and fitness, it's like, you know, I started doing peptides and it worked, and you should try it because I think for you, the inflammation, but or whatever. You know, and yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know that much about it. <laughs> I could be given, you know, you know, and there's boundaries with nutrition and supplements and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to try those. Uh, it, it's funny because I have a, another podcast with a lady talks about health and fitness for like a 12 to 20 years or whatever. And then she's a, like a gut health coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going gonna, yeah, I'm gonna to ask her about, you know, like a, a gluten-free kind of situation you were talking yeah. about yeah, yeah. and then that kind of stuff. And then... Uh, I'm probably going to start doing because I think I eat pretty bad. Okay. Like I do pretty regularly consume fast food. Yeah. Like chick fil canes, you know, that's just my jam, you know what I mean? Hey, we all have a place we can live. <laughs> exactly. We all got a place. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think I will, because I'm I'm the kind of person I have to know why I'm doing that oh, certain I'm, thing. Because I can't just say, hey. That, like, uh, you know, I take cold shower, like, religiously. Yeah. But I know a lot about the benefits of a cold shower. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I take a cold shower. Right. The fast food stuff, yeah, but eh, whatever. So. Just because they say. I mean, yeah, I can't. yeah, so I think I, I would like to know that, my like, uh, I'll let you know whenever I, hey. I go free hey. sometimes. <laughs> talking about, like, microbiome and gut health. Yeah, that's. I love that stuff. I know very little, but I have friends that are in that space. Yeah. And uh, from what I've learned, it's so critical to have a happy, healthy gut. Yeah. And uh, that's why I drink the celery juice, because I know that the celery juice, I mean, you, you want to have, that's like one thing that you could do right away. You do a juicer with the celery? Yeah, I have a slow juicer. It's called like an Omega 9000, and it's a it's a slow juicer. Uh, there's a guy, Anthony Williams, that they used to call the medical medium. Yeah. And I think he was on, like, mainstream television for a while, went on the talk shows and all that stuff. And um, there's a book, though, called Celery for Life. And so if you read it, it tells you all the science behind why celery is such an amazing herb. And it's a herb. It's not a vegetable or fruit. It's actually an herb. Huh. And it has these salt crystals that coat you know, your whole system as it goes down, it's just really great for gut health and all these other benefits. And so, uh, yeah, so that's like, that's why I did But I, the gut health thing excites me because that, just the celery juice alone changed the dynamics of my gut, like, tremendously. Huh. It's, I, I, won't, I won't ever not drink celery juice for the rest of my life. It is a part of my life. 
So I have to have do you you have to have that juicer or do they sell celery? It's best to get the juicer and buy really quality source celery. Otherwise, if you don't uh, buy like really like I get mine at natural grocers. Can I just eat celery? You can, but it's it's not the same. You don't. Why is that? Why is because that? because when you when you uh, juice it, it creates. I forget what they call them. Uh, there's a name for the salt crystals that it produces, and you drink it as fast as you can, and those get all the way down into your system, and and they have healing properties for your esophagus, for everything that it goes into all the way through huh. and, and out. Gotcha. So when you eat it, you don't get that celery juicer of the salt crystals. Okay, but I, look, I mean, and as a matter of fact, I'll share with you my copy of Celery for Life. Because it's a really easy read, and if you're interested, you can read it. And if not, in six months or whatever, I'll come back and get it. Okay, okay. That way you don't have to buy it or invest yeah. until you read it. Yeah, I'm a I'm an audible reader, so I'll, I'll oh, read the book. Okay, okay. Cool. And listen to it, and then, yeah, I need to do something about my food health, so yeah. gut health or whatever. Yeah. So it's so funny because I'm like the least like I I read a Harley like I know I've been in construction my whole life. Yeah, like I come from like my dad was a redneck, like a far like a uh, a cowboy, like he, he yeah. team roped, wrote <laughs> race cars and t- bailed hay and all that stuff. Right, and I'm like the least likely guy to you would suspect to eat to drink this out. Like I'm like <laughs> man, I'm like yeah. I mean, I'm to the point now where my next step in my nutrition is the source of fresh goat milk. Mm. from actually from a goat farm there down in Blanchard. And so learning how to source that and get it into my regular, my kitchen regularly. Yeah. Work it into my meal preps and everything is like my next, instead of having homogenized meals. Huh. Which is really not. Interesting. Better. I mean, that not that kind of like a, I mean, I've noticed like whenever you go to like a martial art gym or like, you know, the guy was like tattooed up and everything and then like uh, kind of looking scary, but their healthy habits is so much more than like a regular guy down the street, like a juice and yoga and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. We do that all the time. And then like uh, like a regular guy looking nice guy, but they like smoke a cigarette, they drink beer all the time. Yeah. I think it, I I find it, it's funny. <laughs> it's just like don't judge by people, but by a cover or whatever. Right. Yeah. 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 But uh, I wanted to have a one discussion before we go, whatever. So you're you love sneakers, right? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, yeah, I co- <laughs> I collect sneakers. You collect sneakers. They are one section of my portfolio, right? Like I look at them as an asset. I don't wear them like. I mean, I, I've had sneakers I have on our New Balances right now. I'm going with the, the dad vibe. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't wear, but I have like yeah, over 100 pairs of Jordans and stuff like that. Damn. What's your favorite sneakers? Man, just because like I grew up on Kobe mm-hmm. and like he was one of my influences growing up and I, I played basketball my whole life. It's the one sport I could afford yeah. when I was a kid. Because we could just use someone else's basketball and it was free. Yeah, and I still play. And I and Kobe, like, so I was when we would get on the courts and stuff as kids. Someone would be like Allen Iverson, big whatever. People would like play different people, and I was always Kobe. Yeah, I had a fade, I had a fade away. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like I got a little bit of Kobe spade away. <laughs> and so I really grew up, and he was like, and I didn't have Bell influences in my life and so i really looked up to him yeah followed him and stuff like that and um and i always loved kobe and so uh you know when he passed away in in his accident with, with gia um i i started buying more kobe stuff and and i think the kobe grinch are now my favorite and i have some shoes that are worth like five thousand dollars these aren't worth that much but I think if I got rid of all of my sneakers, yeah, except one pair, I would keep the Kobe wrenches. Damn, that's a good way to figure out what's your favorite, right? Like, a, to if you if I have to give away all the what's with the what's one left. Yeah. The re the thing that I wanted to ask, right? So, I've been 
anti Nike for a long time. Okay. Because of um like a sweatshop situation or child foot labor stuff. Okay. So like uh but my girlfriend brought it bit to me a point that like a sweatshop is not as bad as like I think or whatever. Because I didn't like really do research. I just heard about it. Yeah. I'm like, I have so much more like sneakers I can buy. But also I use Apple. It's a kind of same situation. They go yeah. to the switch up. Oh, okay. oh, really? But like, a, do you, do you, like, what do you think about that kind of stuff? So I think it's important to be aware of what we just listened to. Yeah. Or what's being fed to us. Yeah. Without knowing all the actual facts behind everything. Yeah. And I think your your awareness of that as we, and as we mature, like I've become more aware about that for myself in all areas. Yeah. And I, I think when it comes, and and I will say this, I probably don't do as good at researching all those things. Yeah. Like I've heard things about Starbucks. I've heard things about now about Nike. That, yeah. I, I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Um, Apple, all those companies. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy, like, ethically farmed coffee. Like, right. I believe in that, right? Like, yeah. The coffee's way better. Yeah. And all those things. And so... At the office, like we encourage them, they they have you know, cause, and it's important to someone else there, so we make sure we do that. But I don't think I spend. I don't. I think this. I think when I complete this life book program and I have all twelve areas of my life mapped out, and I'm really, I'm spending, you know, I'm 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 really honoring each area, each area, and managing my life at that level. I think it'll free me up to do the more important like that like i'll be able to dive into those things and research all the things that I, the products that i'm buying and what their impact on the earth and their impact on people and all those things i just i so i don't want to be hard on myself and say that i haven't done good enough in investigating those things i think that it's something that i'm glad you mentioned it because it's something that as i go forward and keep leveling up it's something that needs to become more thought out and more of a part of my overall living pattern and 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 uh in commerce uh what we call it capitalism got so. you yeah that's very interesting i mean i've i can't wait to hear after you go through that stuff and then you research that stuff on that i'll ask the same question and see what you said i think yeah. that'd be very very interesting yeah it's cool because i'm i already kind of have done it a little bit here and there like i yeah. do a thing called rpm like that's how i live every day it's called rpm results focused purpose driven massive action plan like that's my every day so uh or 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 a rapid planning method is another abbreviate as another way to say it and it's a tony robbins technology right that he created from some other things that he put together yeah long story short basically what you do is you, you first look at the result you're after yeah um uh, and and why you're after it right purpose driven and and your plan and uh and part of that like one one sector of that is it ties in the scene is like i have categories of improvement right? yeah so like i want to improve my physical health i want to improve my spiritual life yeah i want to improve my intellect i want to improve my finances i want to improve my career i want to improve my ability to contribute so I have all these categories that I want to, and so as I schedule my day yeah. to be really fulfilled, I'll make sure I hit, even if it's for personal relationships, I'm going to call my friend Lyle in Arizona and just let him know that I love him and that, you know, I'm here if he needs anything or whatever. And so that'll be like in my personal relationship. And, and so I'll make sure I hit each of those categories as often as I can to feel really fulfilled. So I kind of do... But this life book thing is like an, another level of it. It's about like creating a literal book, yeah, of all your of your vision statement and your goals and your end game and what you want to contribute and just all the things and tied into a book that that really makes sense and is is really comprehensive. That's kind of interesting because I kind of do the same like uh, similar things. I do journal. It's like a journal, like a first page. Uh, this is like some YouTuber I follow. I think he's Clark Kegley or something like that. Uh, the first page is like uh, you write it down. Uh, you know, like average life span is like 76 years or something like that. Okay. And then you minus that from your age and then times 365. You write it on a number. Okay. That's how much you have 
uh, left. Oh yeah. In your life. Okay. And yeah. then you kind of write it down like a quotes, book quotes you like or whatever on the yeah. first yeah. page. Yeah. And then bottom, uh, like a, uh, the, uh, like a, what's that called? Back cover. Okay. Like a, you write down five, uh, uh, category of your life, uh, goals okay. of this year or whatever. Yeah. And then you kind of make your life in the five different categories. And then, so I have a, this, this thick of like a sketchbook mm-hmm. and then that I build it on a 20 pages for work. 20 p- pages for fitness, 20 fi- pages oh. for fitness, 20 pages for family, and all, all that kind of stuff. And then whenever, you don't have to do it every day, write it down, but you can, What whenever you're thinking about it, you just write it down, yeah. like what's going through. It's kind of, the kind of purpose of doing journal is not like, like a team movie or whatever, like talking about like a boyfriend or whatever. That's not a purpose. It's the purpose is to, find answer within you kind of situation yeah, yeah. whenever i just write it down in journal like yeah. damn i was like nervous or scared or like i was overthinking about this stuff yes. oh damn like yeah it's Something clear happened. <laughs> see it in black when you put pen to paper it's true. yeah it's so true. Some kind of magic happens, yeah. yeah so that's kind of similar to what you're just saying yeah, sorry about what was you know the pictures and the quotes and the categories and all that absolutely yeah, yeah. so I, I i think that i'm very big uh fan of doing journals it helped yeah. Yeah. my life and my mental health quite a bit cool yeah but okay so that uh yeah like i said uh, i ask this question to every guest but what is your uh advice to five years ago yourself so that would be 2018. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2018. Let me, let me put myself back there. Get a, a pretty visual. So, yeah, 2018. You know, um, and looking forward to now. I mean, it's straight up with me. Um, the advice I would give myself five years ago is to invest in your financial intelligence like educate yourself on being financially responsible Hmm. because i've educated myself in a lot of areas and that was one that was look i just i didn't want to like i just and so i've i've lost a lot of money (laughs) Uh, the, I, like the investment opportunities I didn't lose it I yeah. didn't lose it but I will say this I would have several million dollars more in my pockets if I would have taken financial education more seriously five years ago huh that would be the big one but now you know <laughs> when, well, when, the Warren, when Warren Buffett was asked like I don't know not too long ago what what the best investment is. I think it was 2018, actually, funny enough. But he's like, what's the best investment in 2018? And, and Warren Buffett said, investing in yourself. Yeah. Investing in your own education. That's the best investment you can make. Yeah. And I believe that. And I've done that a lot in other areas. Yeah. But because this year, it, it, because finances have become such an important thing to me over the last six months and then really leading into this year this year's if i had like a slogan for this year or whatever a catch for me it's financial intelligence it's like as i go through 2023 that's like my big target yeah like isn't health it isn't whether it's financial intelligence so i'm spending a ton of time yeah resources learning all as much as i can in 2023 about everything the whole financial game investing saving um, uh, just spending and yeah, just literally everything. I think, I think that's great. I mean, like you've done so much in your, through your life and that starting business and then like construction, all like the skill level managing stuff and health and fitness and so juice or whatever you do in the Muay Thai, you doing a lot of stuff. And then I like how you put it that way of this year's slogan. I think a lot of people, myself, sometimes I get overwhelmed of like, Oh, there's like so many different things I have to do. Mm-hmm. And then like, 
I don't do nothing, you know, yeah. kind of like everything is not like an eh kind of situation. Yeah. So whenever I focus on one thing, like I, I try to focus on like five things yeah. and the five year goal plan. I have like five big goals and the five years. And then that's like every day I live just towards that goal. Yeah. But anyway, so my, my, my thing is right now is to focus on, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, what's your what was what's your slogan for 2023? My slogan for 2023 is uh, YouTube. Okay. Yeah, just uh, I wanted to do this for so long. Yeah. This this can't be any better timing. Yeah. In my life, and then uh, yeah, I just wanted to share the content and then uh, inspire people. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, you know the I can do the same thing and I'm doing that for our clients and like a business and all that kind of stuff. And then marketing changing. And then we've been doing that, been being successful. A lot of like my employees doing that stuff a lot. And then now like I wanted to share this and that. if I can change somebody's life, like kind of same thing as you're doing a nonprofit way, if... I can make some content or some sort of the mentorship to the people who uh, who were five years ago myself, yeah. then watch my stuff, then they get inspired or even live or whatever. Yeah. And then I'll be happy, you know? So that's just my my year slogan. Yeah. Okay. It's just like you too. This, yeah. yeah. You can make a big impact. Yeah. That is that. So I was talking to, you know, Jason, too, mm -hmm. that works for him. He, I was talking to him the other day, and I really believe that all of us, every one of us, gets a deep, meaningful satisfaction out of contributing to other people. Yeah. And, you know, learning how, where where we can contribute the most to make the biggest impact, I think, is such a important mission such a great position to be in in life. Yeah. Getting to do the nonprofit, you getting to do this. It's it's really it's really pretty outstanding to be yeah. in a situation to start thinking, okay, how can I make the biggest impact and help the most people or help the people the most? It doesn't necessarily have to be the most people, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be like a quantity thing, but like just a quality thing. How can I make the biggest impact each person at the store or whatever whatever it is, whoever yeah, but I know that we all. There's nothing better. There's no drug. There's nothing better than being able to really make a difference in someone else's life. I believe. I mean, I, I think it speaks to all of us. Yeah, I totally believe that. I mean, like, it's like we could have. I mean, it's kind of like, I don't know. I struggle with sometimes. Like, we don't have to have this conversation in front of the camera, right? You don't have to record it, but this moment can be like disappear yeah. yeah but if you record it if you put it on internet somebody can't listen there's like a lot of hater could comment and like whatever right yeah. but there could be one person who were going through the same thing yeah. listen to your story say maybe that person started the business one guy did that yeah then i would be super happy the reason we're putting this together yeah that could be very, very influential and inspiration. You guys out there, if you're going to start a business, you just got to risk it for the biscuit. <laughs> you got to go for it. Like, there's no other way to do it. Just yeah. do it. Just yeah. go. Yes. Just go. For well, sure. But, yeah, I mean, you just have to do it. But um, what's your, how do you see yourself in five years? Oof. Five years from now, I see myself as in the best shape of my life. Um, as being with the woman of my dreams, as having a couple more kids, believe it or not, um, as uh, still working, still working hard. Um, at that point, I plan on, I, I would like to be in the position to be selling the construction side of business, leaning more into the nonprofit and some other stuff that I want to get into. Yeah. Um, and, but, um, uh, Definitely the nonprofit up and running and making massive impact would be huge. Like in five years, if we could be contributing, you know, a quarter million, 
to the nonprofit each year through the business. Um, that would be where I where I see that. Yeah, what else? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's a pretty good question. Man. That's pretty good five year goal. I would say. I, and I could bring out my five year goals. <laughs> they're on my iPhone. Yeah. And I just and it's not coming to. No, that's like good. Though. It's just from the heart, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, like de uh, definitely a passionate, meaningful, loving relationship with a woman. Yeah. Um, hopefully in a business to get out of, or in a position to get out of construction, because what I do, it is, it, it's intense, it's stressful, it's, co it's very, my business is very complicated. It's not like, it's not like it's just an overhead door and we do that that times twenty. All right. Right. It's all commercial industrial. So, um, but yeah, so. Getting out of construction and leaning into what I'm more passionate about, helping more kids, being with the woman of my dreams, and being in the best shape of my life. I mean, between that, everything else falls in. Yeah, for sure, for sure. How uh, how can people can find you? Uh, you can you can find me on Facebook or, I mean, you're my marketing. Company. <laughs> So you yeah, tell me, yeah. You tell me how they can find me. I, I mean, don't, Instagram. So the only one I know how to use. Yeah, we tell my age right here. Sorry, is Facebook. Got you. My I've had nephews and nieces try to show me how to do Snapchat and Instagram and all these other ones. Yes, I'm just like you know what? I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm good with Facebook. <laughs> like that is enough for me. So yeah, yeah, or, or email. And then uh, I'll spam it, spam it to death. <laughs> yeah, okay, commercial door com. We'll put the, everything on the uh, link in the below. You yeah. Know? And then uh, yeah, that's my that's my spam email. So I mean, I go through. I have yeah. I either I go through it or I have like a virtual assistant go through it once every week nice. or so, and just if there's anything they forward it to me. Virtual that's assistant. A lot of yeah. You have virtual assistant. Yeah. Huh. You like that? I do. Yeah, and they love it too. Yeah. What do you mean? Who Who's they? Oh, I have I have one in the Philippines called Joey. That's yeah. like my direct assistant. Yeah. And uh, he he makes more money working from home, working for me, than he can make doing anything else there in the Philippines. And so it works really well for his family, and it works well for us. Nice. Because he's a lot less expensive. Yeah. Than an American. Or yeah. someone in house, especially someone in house. Right. Yeah, look into VAs, man. They're uh, they're really it's really a great thing for for them and for and for your business. Huh? If you have things that they can they can tackle. Yeah, I'll look into that. I when we get off, I'll show you my uh, the lady that I get them through because she she does like you pay her and she will recruit a bunch and they'll get in a Zoom room and. They'll do like an interview and she makes sure that they're culturally a good culture fit. They do like weekly meetings like you guys do. Yeah. And with all the VAs and she like, so it's really a cool thing. So they're really close to our culture because she's from some of the culture that I, I came through in business and in, in creating business culture. Yeah. And so she's really in tune and has built her business around creating great culture for them and for the clients as well. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll totally look into that. Well, I mean, thanks for coming in, John. And then, uh, of course. Uh, well, people who are watching this on the YouTube, please like and comment and subscribe. And then people who are uh, listening on the Spotify or Apple or whatever, give us a five-star rating. And then always be frank and drink ton of water and get jacked. See you next Friday. Peace. <laughs> thanks, John.